Are you hearing weird? No, I'm all right. I, I mean, I I, you're fine. Yeah, you're fine. We don't need the earbuds. That's so cool. like, right, listen, Chelsea, I know you don't get this. We're just going to move on. It's a, no, it, it doesn't matter at all. Trust me, you're not. Uh, I've had uh, a lot of people on here have had issues. It's 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 really not that big a deal. I just I just want to talk to you guys about the last crazy four months. Oh, okay. And I, and I am getting a little bit of an echo, but it's all right. It's totally fine. <laughs> it's, I'll get Brad to get something for me. Yeah, say say Brad, honey, I need the earbuds. Yeah, hold on. <laughs> and while she's gone, Michael, do, do me a favor, introduce yourself, uh, say who you are, where you are, what you do for the listeners at home. Okay, well, I am Michael Limbus. I am in Virginia, in the military, and um, yeah, that's basically it. That's it? For the most part. That's, that, that's <laughs> it, yeah. <laughs> now, uh, um, when I first started doing these things, it was... Uh, back in the middle of March when everything was getting weird and everyone was taken a lot more seriously than they are now, which makes no sense. But, yeah. <laughs> but, uh, um, but what I started doing is I just started calling people and asking them uh, how they were dealing with this and, and what they thought of it and how weird it was and how it was affecting them and all those sorts of things. So take me back. Um, or, I mean, we can wait for Robinson or Baldhoff to come back, but, uh, but take me back to what I consider D day, which was Friday, March 13th. That was the Friday before, um, schools closed and, uh, and it was the Friday before they started talking about shutting shit down and all of that. Um, so I want you to do me a favor and tell me a little bit. Oh, wait, Chelsea's back. Okay. Perfect. Chelsea, Chelsea, can you hear us? Yeah. Is that better for you? Yeah. Yeah. It's awesome. And you you sound, your the clarity is unbelievable. Do me a favor, okay, I, introduce yourself, say where you are, who you are, what you do for the listeners at home. I'm Chelsea Baldhoff. I live in Madisonville, inside Cincinnati, Ohio, and I am currently a stay-at-home mom that started my own uh, design business over the past year since I had my daughter. Nice. How come so, I didn't know anything about this design business you started? Because I haven't talked to you much. Uh, yeah, but if you start a business, it seems like you tell first thing you do is tell all your friends, right? Yeah, except for I haven't had much time for the business, so I'm trying to slow go it. So <laughs> slow rolling the business. So business is all uh, word of mouth right now. It's all I okay. can really handle. So, you know, well, I mean, sometimes been doing, it's a good way to start. It's been great. It's yeah. been great. It's been one client after another, which is perfect. It's all I now, can really handle. To tell the truth, are you feeding off the denizens of the quarters regulars? Actually, I'm not. Not at all? Actually, it's um, all um, friends from my other job at uh, Great American. Ah, yeah, which is really only a marginal difference. Really? Yeah. <laughs> kind of, exactly. <laughs> well, I, one of the reasons, Chelsea yeah. uh, and, and uh, Michael, I, I want to go back to what I was saying. I was just telling Michael, I started talking to people about the whole COVID thing because I thought it was weird and I thought it would be interesting to see how people are handling it. And, um, and you, we, we all talked about getting on a couple of months back. And one of the main reasons I want to talk to you is because you have an infant well, a one-year-old right. now, you know, and, and so right. I wanted to talk to you a little bit about um, what, I, what I want you guys to do. I'm going to go back to Michael because I started with him is tell me a little bit about how D-Day was for you when they first started shutting everything down back when things aren't as dangerous as they are now. And uh, mm -hmm. just tell me a little bit about, about uh, how things have been, have been going that way. So Michael, D-Day, back up. You're stationed in Virginia, yes. right? And, uh, so and, so what, 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 did, what did the whole shutdown mean for the military? <laughs> well, for us, well, like, so like, I'm working at like the schoolhouse. So for us, we have students that come from all over, like all over like uh, Korea, uh, Japan, stuff like that. That's where they're stationed. They come here to go to, go to class. But so for us, like they were, we had a uh, class in session and what some, one of the soldiers was from Hawaii. So they're like, well, or do we send them back? Do we keep them here? So they end up keeping them there and uh, expediting some of the classes, getting them done quicker to try to get them out so they're not going in there. But they had us all like wear, wear masks. They shut down a lot of like just essential personnel only. And this was back um, in March and April? They were, yeah, because they had to talk about it like, because they didn't have anything in place. So, right. and then they had mm -hmm. a bunch of like, uh, you had soldiers who were going to basic training who had completed basic training, but they had um, 
uh, stop movement. So basically everyone was staying in place. So even though you graduate based training, you were still staying there, but they also had some soldiers still come new classes coming in. Right. So they had, and like, you know, we can't send them back. Can't send them here. So it was kind of, kind of a cluster for a little while. And now, we just recently, we just recently, just this last week started up classes again. I mean, we have just with students, it's only four, uh, 15 more people. Right. So, but so, it's so like just, everything six feet, six feet apart, mask. Sure. Limited movement. So. Right. But the, the thing is, is, um, uh, you, you said the word stop movement. So there was like an overall military command that everybody had to kind of like stay put. Yep. So like, even if they, they stopped like, um, uh, PCS like permanent change of stations and uh, like moves and stuff like that even if you had orders to go like it's like no you're gonna stay here until this figures this stuff out like the one soldier he completed the course but he wasn't able to go back to Hawaii until like maybe like a week and a half after the class and it had to get signed by uh, a, a general from Hawaii right just to, allow, just to allow just to allow just to allow him to travel back Yep. And, th and and this was and this was in April when we were having um less than a tenth of the caseload that we have now on a daily basis, right? That was yeah, that was between um Yep, like like May like like from March to like May. And then we just canceled like stopped all classes, halted all classes and mm -hmm. no one no one coming or going anywhere. <laughs> and, so. okay but so so you got a lot of restrictions in place but things are trying they're trying to kind of resume they are they're activities. trying they're trying to they're trying to get back to some sort of normalcy but they also have like restrictions of movement so um i know some of the people on post as well as like the navy people around here as well like they're not allowed to um you can just go to the store to go get like go get food and mm -hmm. go shop, go like um, to like appointments and stuff like that. But Get outside of like, right. outside of like, like if you're caught eating out in public and restaurants or hmm. going out to the beach and stuff like that, or going to like a gym off post, like you can be sick, e facing some serious trouble. Even now, yes. Okay. Well, I mean, I guess it's kind of reassuring to know that they left it in place as things got worse. <laughs> we'll, yeah. get, we'll get back to that. Chelsea, you had, when this all started, you had a eight month year old on your hands and, yeah. and, and you're, you're doing a design business, but you're essentially being a stay at home mom. Um, mm -hmm. And, and this is one of the things I wanted to talk to you about because, you know, a lot of people have been up against the idea of like their lives being completely upheaved. Um, but, you know, you you were in a situation where you'd be home a lot anyway, but you didn't have play dates or any of that stuff. T tell me, tell me a little bit about how it went down, how how you and Brad handled it, and how Goldie handled it. I mean, I guess Goldie doesn't have any idea, right? <laughs> not well, yeah, not a clue. Right. Um, <laughs> I, don't I, had this, I had this vision of your eight month old in a high chair going, "I need to see my friends." She's pretty smart. She is right? pretty smart. I would imagine she knows she knows something has arrived. She just hasn't figured out what it is. Yet. Right. Um, we had actually just got back from a trip. Um, at the end of February, we went with Ashley and Ryan, um, you know, friends of both of ours. Mm -hmm. And, uh, we got back March 1st from skiing in Colorado. Oh, okay. How long were you guys yeah, out there? Like, uh, four days. Oh, I, you know, I remember seeing some of the posts and stuff. It seemed like a great trip yeah. and it seemed, and it seemed like you got yeah. it in right under the wire, you know? I think, I mean, I, yeah, I guess, but you know, how long was it actually here before we actually did anything about it? So. Yeah. yeah, there's that. You know what I mean? So two months you know, at least. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. <laughs> so um yeah, we had just come back from a trip, which I guess thank God we got something in because having an eight month old, I was in desperate need of it. So right. that's good. But unlike a lot of my friends, you know, a lot of my friends have kids that are three and five. So they mm -hmm. had to deal with the whole school system debacle. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Which I was kind of thankful that I only have, you know, uh, a baby. So I didn't have to deal with all of that. And, and being a stay at home mom, I'd have to deal with all the childcare, which I cannot right. imagine. I right. mean, I felt lucky to be in the situation that I have been in just because I didn't have to deal with the childcare nightmares and kids getting out of school and all of that and homeschooling. Mm -hmm. Oh my Lord. So no, don't, don't get me started. Cause Nobody wants to hear yeah. me talk more about that. <laughs> yeah. So honestly, um, you know, it just affected us, um, our household 
really from a financial standpoint, right? More than anything, right. um, because all of my current clients that I was about to start new design projects for obviously canceled mm -hmm. until further notice. So right. I was doing no no design work. So um, you know, I could not only could I not go out and shop um, or purchase or anything like that, then there were awful lead times on getting products they weren't even arriving you know and then people didn't want me in their house obviously right well um, i wouldn't want you so in my that, house either i know right <laughs> Who would? um so so yeah so that was nil so no work and then um my husband uh his family owns brandy meats mm -hmm. um and most of their business comes from casinos oh, um shit. restaurants mm-hmm um, sporting venues, mm -hmm. all of which got shut down. So, right. um, their one driving force was the fact that because of COVID and everything getting shut down, meat was really, really hard to find as I'm sure you guys may have found in your lives. Yep. I don't know if you were out, but grocery shops were obviously grocery stores were wiped clean and meat was a major problem. Um, so that actually kind of worked in their favor because they were able to get products that grocery stores right. were not. So did they, did they so, kind of switch to more of a retail model versus this kind of institutional stuff they've been doing? Yeah. So they had been wanting to get into door to door, um, consumer, um, delivery and weren't really necessarily going to get into it, but this kind of just pushed them to do that, which was right. great. So that kind of helped them stay afloat. You know, so we started um, doing door to door, not door to door, but, you know, selling directly to the consumer, which was amazing. So yeah. um, people were able to get safe, you know, meat, fresh um, delivered to their door and not have to go out to the grocery store. And if all they were web, afraid, web, website stuff, website ordering, that kind of thing. Yep. So created, created a website really quickly and you go online and you order and it's to your door that day. Right on. So, yeah. So that was fabulous. So that helped them stay afloat. Um, but yeah, it's, it was just scary because, you know, they were in fear of closing their doors every single day. Yeah. Because everything that they knew for their business was gone and they didn't know when it was going to open back up and restaurants right. still are, you know, on the brink of closing again and well, still obviously not at capacity. And I mean, well, let me ask, let me ask you guys both this. So, so, and not, not to generalize it too much, cause obviously it's very specific situations and yeah, it was good fortune for, for Brandy Meats to be able to pivot like that. You know, mm -hmm. uh, Mike, Michael, your situation, uh, I mean, it, it changed as far as holding patterns for things and some things taking a little longer than they normally would, but generally speaking, it sounds like it wasn't as devastating as it could have been. Um, but let, let me ask you this, especially in light of the fact that we're, you know, we're five months down the road here. Is it five already? Mm, no, know. not quite. It's four. No. It's four months. Yeah, we're four, four months down the road. So we're four months mm -hmm. down the road here. And, um, yeah, as I've alluded to a couple of times, I mean, I personally think the circumstances are worse than they've ever been, but, mm -hmm. but mental outlooks are, you know, obviously have been adjusted over time. Um, Michael, I mean, how, how, how did you feel about, you know, the the stay in play i mean what, what did you think i mean did you feel like there was an overreaction did you feel like things were done the way they should have did you feel like and and kind of do me a favor and couch it based on what we know now um i kind of well for my from my personal like experience being in the military like just being told you're not allowed to do something like i mean that's an order right it's <laughs> yeah, just like, yeah, like I'm, I'm just like <laughs> okay yeah sure cool all right cool yeah we can't do this like, well, it's not like your life hasn't consisted of doing your job, playing video games, and drinking anyway. Well, right. Yeah. The same, problem same is. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But, problem uh, is yes. No more dance parties. That's, well, just more just solo dance parties, which right. I, was gonna say, I, I might enjoy more, but that's. I was going to say, I'm surprised, we had, I'm surprised Elliot hasn't started following you on TikTok. No, right. I, I personally don't have don't have one for that exact reason. Because but, of Elliot um, specifically? Oh no, not <laughs> Elliot, because of Lord only knows what I would do on there. But um Me and Chelsea. So, me, the Lord doesn't have to Chelsea and I could tell you, but we'll wait till we we're know. not recording. <laughs> right. Yeah, we know. <laughs> yes. Uh but um it 
Beans like told like not like not able to do certain things. It kind of really wasn't that big of a, um, didn't really yeah change like my day to day life as much. It's like wearing mask. Okay, fine. It is what it is. Mm-hmm. But uh, being yeah. told like because my dad actually had symptoms and he was self quarantined. Like they he went to the hospital. Like yeah, he needs to be quarantined. And like my mom doesn't have good health, and my sister lives there too. She doesn't have good health, and she has three little kids. So that's kind of scary. And like being told like even if something happened, especially like, so I've like lost like several uh, grandparents, like while I was in the service and they're like, yeah, emergency Red Cross and go home for this. But even if that was the case, like the f- thought of like losing like my dad and not being able to go home for the funeral simply because he could have, could have died from COVID-19. Like they're like, we can't, right. and sorry, sorry to hear about that. Like that was terrifying. That mm-hmm. And um, did he end up testing, po- testing negative? No, yeah. Uh, no, they said he had tested. I uh, believe he had tested positive. I believe really, so. or at least for the, symp- the symptoms and everything like that. And the, like, yeah, he needs to get quarantined. I don't know if he ever went back and actually got uh, the test or not. But like, my mm-hmm. mom was like really worried about it. I uh, sure. Uh, you know, I mean, you know how she gets. But like, I I called her because she was texting us, and she was texting us on the phone. I could tell she was worried, and she was like, coughing because she had Lysol bomb the entire house, and she couldn't breathe because ninety nine percent of the air was Lysol. Right. Oh so, my God. Right. <laughs> which yeah. is as deadly as most viruses. That it's yeah. Right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I think it's important to point out for listeners at home that you are, in fact, my nephew, and subsequently, I know your parents, Dave and Debbie, and so. Yes. Um, uh, I don't right, mind so telling you. So when you say you, so when you say you know how she gets. You know how she is. I'm just like, yeah. Oh yeah. 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 Oh. <laughs> Michael's mom. We know how she is. Yeah. <laughs> 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 but they're both fine, though, right? And Gabrielle's yeah, fine. Yeah, they're all doing. They're doing well. Okay. Doing good. Yeah. Good. Uh, glad to hear that. But I mean, so, but see, that's the thing is I, that that kind of sucks. But generally speaking, you know, like it, it always heartens me to hear somebody say something as casual as wearing a mask, whatever. You know, because mm-hmm. it really, you know, in in, you know, against the backdrop of everything else that's going on, it seems like a, a small detail. Um, but well, what about you, Chelsea? I mean, obviously the 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 risk of Brandy Meats and the fact that you were just starting this business and you had Goldie real young and all that. But what was your mm-hmm. general what was your general outlook? I mean, what what did you think? And and again, couch it against where we are now. I mean, everybody seems very optimistic now, despite the fact that everything is very clearly worse than it was back when everything was shutting down. Mm-hmm. Um, but I mean, just just at I mean, just out of idle curiosity. I mean, what, what was your thought process then compared to now? Um, you know, like I said before, it didn't really change much about my day to day. Really. <laughs> you guys um, are boring as fuck. I can't get both of you guys. Both of you guys said the same well, thing. Oh, it's, it's uh, my life was the same. <laughs> well, because we both were kind of stuck inside anyway, right? Anyway, yeah. yeah. I mean, yeah. we're both kind of, you know, but it did, it, it is hard because I am at home with my daughter all day, which means I do, when I do run errands, I have to run them with her. Right. You know, I don't have another option. So that was difficult. Does Goldie have then, a little Gucci mask that she wears? She, if she did, she would not wear it. She hates accessories. So it would be ripped <laughs> off immediately. <laughs> so there's no chance. She's going to be a total tomboy. She hates a necklace. She, she hates, hates accessories. <laughs> hates, hates them. Can you believe she's my child? I have no idea how this happens. Yes, actually. I mean, <sighs> that's there's how it an goes, opposite right? thing. Yeah. I mean, I mean, yeah. Fievel's going to be 17 in September and he hasn't done any time yet. Can you believe he's my child? No. <laughs> how, how, many, how many tattoos does he have? None. Exactly. It's so weird. <laughs> so, yeah. I mean, that was hard. Is like, you know, trying to, like, I had to have you know, my trusted like core, like my mom or um, mother-in-law come. And so I could like go to the grocery store or, Mm -hmm. you know, things like that. So that was definitely um, a difficult, you know, thing for me. Um, But besides that, it was really just like, I really have to be stuck inside even longer. Right. I've been, I just had this baby in July and I'm like so ready for spring to be here and get out and, you know, go and And live life. And then... Yeah, so that was, you know, I'm like, like Imbus, you know, we like to have fun and get right. out and be with people and do fun things. And so that was hard for me, honestly, because I, you know, did already go through all of my postpartum stuff. And I was like, now, did you have, did you have postpartum stuff? 
Yeah, I, I guess. I, I, well, that's the thing is, I, I mean no offense by this, but having known you for, you know, a relatively long period of time, mm-hmm. uh, I, I, you just strike me as the kind of person to have a baby and be like, yep, but a, mm, yeah, and I'm on. <laughs> you know, it just right. seems like, you know, it just seemed like something that you just kind of roll with. <laughs> I did. I feel like it did roll with it in the very beginning. And it was just like, oh, yeah, okay. It's just like, you know, have a baby and everything's the same. But mm-hmm. it was like the idea of, you know, I had gone from working two full-time jobs on my feet in a very social atmosphere right to being a stay-at-home mom with a child that can't doesn't talk back right so that was so difficult you went you went from massive interaction to almost none <laughs> yeah so the social fact of the matter was you very, never very hard. you never called me I'm, I'm sure we, I'm, we probably you know the the bald hoff haggerty text got me through every once in a while Yes, every once in a while. And, and, and I want you to know that to this day, even today, in fact, um, mm-hmm. I, oh, I always key in Robinson and then have to correct it. Do you? Oh, you can call me Robinson. It's okay. It's the nickname. Aww. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, so I think it, for me, it was just the social factor, um, you know, because I was ready to finally like get out. Now spring is here and, you know, um, yeah. And then just the scare for my daughter, you know, and having to figure out yeah. how I'm going to get out and get stuff done and have her. So. Yep. And have everybody yeah. be safe. Yes. So. Be yeah. Safe. Mm-hmm. Well, I mean, you know, I, I've been talking to a lot of people and, and, and uh, strangely enough, despite the vast numbers of people that I've been talking to, a lot of people I know have been very, very fortunate. Their lives haven't mm-hmm. been devastated by the circumstance, you know, um, mm-hmm. uh, I know, I mean, obviously I still know a lot of people in the restaurant business who, you know, had to suck it up for a minute anyway. And, uh, yeah, and I, I thought about that too. I mean, just us all being in the restaurant business in the past, I mean, I yeah. just cannot imagine. Yeah. All of a sudden. Yeah. I, I can't like it, if it had been, if this had happened two years ago or three years ago before I got the other job and yeah. I, was li- I was living on the quarter, I mean, Christina, and I would have been devastated i mean financially we would have been just devastated we would we would have been amongst the 35 percent of the american public that i hear didn't pay their rent or their mortgage this month that would have i been mean i think too. we all i mean i think we all i mean that was that's kind of that lifestyle i mean i think we all lived you know like that like looking forward to the next night's you know income i mean looking forward to it or Honestly. not i mean I, I i you know ever since ever since i stopped bartending i've had to i've had to you know try and grow up financially because it was just like yeah. m- money was something i didn't care about because i might be working saturday <laughs> you know it's just like you know, exactly. I'll, I'll, have, I'll have 200 dollars saturday i can spend all this money today <laughs> it's fine we'll go to dinner and spend 250 dollars because right. right. tomorrow i'll make it again make like, it back what? exactly exactly you know what i, I did thinking yeah I, 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 you know, I don't know. <laughs> I don't, I don't know. I mean, I'm, I'm 53 years old and I'm just now getting to the point now where I'm putting money in savings. I mean, granted, yeah. it's, granted it's only five or 10 bucks every couple of weeks, but. Sure. <laughs> Got to start somewhere. You got to start somewhere. It's true. But you know, the thing is I was doing these, I don't know if you guys have watched these. I was doing these for a while and it was all about the COVID-19 because I thought it was really interesting because I really think this is going to, you know, change America forever. Um, mm-hmm. And then, uh, and then the George Floyd thing happened uh, the last week of mm-hmm. May, and uh, and the whole world exploded, essentially, mm-hmm. or at least it seemed like it from where I was sitting. And yeah. uh, and uh, and that week, I you know I interviewed a couple of rock guys, and you know I talked to some people more about COVID nineteen. And then uh, as as the you know as the protests mounted and things got more and more serious, and police all over the country forgot about video technology apparently, and and there was all kinds of crazy shit going on. And, um, and I just, I, I stopped doing it. I stopped doing this show altogether because um, I really felt like one, there was no way you couldn't talk about the circumstances. And two, mm-hmm. I, you know, I mean, and, and Michael, you can vouch for this. Most of my friends are real white and I didn't know that most yeah. of my friends would have much to contribute to this conversation really. Mm-hmm. And so I just stopped doing it like kind of out of terror. <laughs> I, was just yeah. like, I, don't, I don't, you know, I mean, I didn't know what I have to contribute about it. And it's funny that you mentioned Ryan, uh, him and I were talking about it a couple of weeks ago and, um, and he recommended something I'd been thinking about anyway. He said, you gotta, you know, grab the bull by the horns, 
have have the only African American people you've ever had on again to talk specifically about this and just kind of meet it head on. And um, that was last Tuesday, and it was a total disaster. Ryan didn't show up. He sent someone in his stead. The girl Rory he'd recruited from Atlanta couldn't make it. Um, Mike Butler, a good friend of mine who I pretty much grew up with because he was like best friends with my brother, he couldn't make it. He flew to California unexpectedly. So all I had was my other – this is, this is great. I can't wait to say this. My other black nephew, <laughs> Lavelle. <laughs> Because you had never been on, Michael. I didn't pull you into it. But, uh, but, but let me ask you, let, let's go ahead and dovetail with that really quick. I mean, Michael, how much of this, I mean, did any of that have any bearing on your existence in the Army? <laughs> you know, seriously, over, I mean, my guess is the camaraderie there. I mean, I, I can only imagine that, that racism is present, obviously, in the armed forces still. But I've met your friends and stuff. It seems like it doesn't have the impact on you anyway that you might imagine? Um, yeah, I mean, I think all of my friends that I brought back, I think there's only two. Two that I wouldn't say were technically white and the other one, <laughs> like that, like the other they're, they're Technically like, white? Yeah, well, yeah, because well, well, yeah, I was- Well, their birth certificate says they're Yugoslavian. <laughs> well, no, well, uh, I, mean, I mean, I mean, I mean, yeah. I mean, because you know, I mean, you know, you know, Chad, and and yep. then the other one was was Sarah, and then Cody, but he's like, what, Panamanian as well. So, and, did you but, say? Pan, then, uh, did you say Panamanian? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> and uh, I thought then, that. Uh, I'm sorry. Then, I know, I know that's actually a place, and that's an origin and stuff, but it sounds like a ride at Coney Island. It does. <laughs> A really yeah, fun a one. Ride. That would be a great ride. <laughs> would it be like a roller coaster or like what type of ride? Like you pick something you're gonna throw up on. Yeah, no, it's a spinning ride for sure. A spinning ride you throw <laughs> up on. Well, that that that's perfect. That's a perfect description of Robinson. So I'm glad we have the same vision of Rob <laughs> of Robinson. Huh? Not 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 formally known Chelsea Robinson, but my buddy Robinson. Robinson. So. Okay. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Yeah, let's be clear. But um, yes. <laughs> For the viewers at but, home yeah. who are already <laughs> confused as fuck anyway. <laughs> uh, yeah, I mean, I would say just through like almost any system that I've grown up in, the even like uh, grade school, high school, even college, like yeah, in, in the military as well, like yeah, there's like racism present and everything like that. But you have people who have your diff different views or anything like that might treat you a certain type of way, like just because whatever, but when it comes to like, Hey, getting this done where like, you don't care creed, anything nationality right. or anything about anybody. It's like, Hey, we're get this done. Like, Hey, we're in this. You don't have to like me. I don't have to like you, but we're get we have to get this done together. Right. Mm -hmm. So, um, and the whole thing, like typically if I know that a couple of, couple issues that came up like I wouldn't say small issues but issues kind of like that between like some people that I know and I told the person in charge like hey just put it let's bring them in the room let them let them talk to each other if they can't handle if they can't handle out like if you got handle like adults like, I can I have to treat you guys like, like kids like nothing he said was nice I can see how you got upset about this but he di he didn't say anything wrong you're getting upset you're blowing you're seeing it in some way you're making a big deal out of nothing and don't don't just pull the race like don't pull like the race card right and just make it about that it's like because we can't if you feel that way and he didn't know that you you felt this way when he says certain things like or post something you can't get mad at him for not knowing like let him know and then he does it before, then he does it again that's him purposely doing that and then then you can come to me but you come to me and be like hey he already talked to you about this you're not listening to him now you have to listen to me Mm. So. Yeah, I mean, I, I don't know. I mean, obviously, I don't know all the details of that particular situation. But, you know, it reminds me of a conversation I had with Fievel, which is, uh, which taught me something that, you know, even in my 50s, I didn't really know, which is, uh, uh, it's, it's really, really easy to make the mistake of thinking people should think the way you do, which means, mm -hmm. you know, which means, you know, like, like, if you if you consider you know, if you consider certain words uh, um, unoffensive because they're just words or whatever, it's absolute arrogance and borderline racism on your part to expect other people to see it the same way, you know? Mm -hmm. And, you know, so, I mean, 
I, there's things that are just kind of blanket that I think all of us kind of accept is not acceptable. I don't, I don't, I don't know. Well, I, so it was, so, I mean, hopefully we don't get in trouble for this. We shouldn't. So we have these connected. Nobody, hey, no, hey, nobody watches this anyway. Don't worry about it. Perfect. <laughs> perfect. So there's uh we have, uh, they're basically, they're essentially jumper cables. Um, right. But we call there's, there's, there's slave receptacles on the, on the vessel where you plug them in. That's what it's called. It's mm -hmm. just like to, to slave, to slave it over, like mm -hmm. to basically jump it over. And yep. they're called slave cables. Mm -hmm. And like there so there was a post that said, man, civilians are going to freak out when they know that when they hear what these are called. And it was just a picture of them. And like, it didn't, it didn't specify what it was called or anything like that. Didn't even say it, slave cable. It did. And it didn't even say, it. and the kid got up and the one of the soldiers got upset about said post. And it's like, listen, you knew what, it, like if the, you knew what they were called beforehand. You didn't say anything. Like, I understand you being upset about it, but he didn't name them that. Right. And right. So, and that, so for that, it's like, he didn't, like, if you want us to call it something else, we can call it something else. But everyone else is going to know that these are referred to this. Like, it's not, it's not directed towards you at all. Like, you can make it personal, but it's, it's not personal. Right. It's, mm -hmm. it's, a, it's a little different than the African-American moving crew being told they need to get some rope. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. But see, but see, that's no, that's the thing though. Is that you know that that's actually uh, something that I hadn't even occurred to me before. Is but you know, uh, you know, master and slave. I mean, th these these are these are terms that are used in all kinds of mechanical and electronic applications. Um, yeah. You know, in a circumstance where something follows the order of something else. You know, whether that's right or wrong based on human history doesn't change the fact that it's been that way for as long as we, you know, as long as it's been around. You know, I mean, it, it even brakes in a car, you know, there's a master cylinder, you know, it, it, you know, MIDI, MIDI, there's a master MIDI controller and then there's slave links and so on and so forth, you know, right. and, you know, I, you know, and I think it's ultimate hair splitting to worry about that sort of thing. But I mean, w when this whole thing went down, I, I just, you know, part of me really wanted to kind of go out because I, I was super excited. I thought, wow, this is one of those world changing things that few people in a generation get to actually witness, much less take part in. But I was too much of a sissy to go to any protest or anything because I was afraid of the virus. Uh, hey, Chelsea, did you, I mean, what, what was your experience with this whole thing went down? I think you, that's the third snort and I can't tell you how happy I am. I can't tell you how happy I am to have even gotten the one. You know, but, but, but when this, I but, haven't well, been counting, but clearly you have. Yo, know, I, I, I got a little tally here. I'll show you later. I've got oh, it written okay. down. Uh, no, but, but I mean, when that when the whole the whole thing started, I mean, that weekend after the weekend before the week had gone by after George Floyd's death, that first weekend was crazy. I mean, there was huge shit happening everywhere, and the craziest shit was the like I said before, the cops were behaving exactly in the way everybody was protesting about. And uh, um, I mean, how how did that go over in your house? I mean, did you? Did you go? Did you and Goldie go down to Madisonville and, and protest and stuff? Uh, no, we did not. Okay. No. <laughs> um, no. I mean, I think there, you know, was a little bit of a fear in our household of things getting out of hand. You know, I didn't. I wasn't a proponent of the way that the protesting was going, and you know, not just here, but a lot of other places. I mean, all of the the violence. To me, it was it's, it's, I mean, I mean, a lot of the violence was instigated by police reactions, though. Typically, though, I mean, honestly, really. Yeah, I mean, sometimes. I mean, yeah, I mean, I guess, but you know, <laughs> having a, having. I mean, having I guess. A young daughter. I mean, having a young daughter, it's still scary. No, I, I was. I'm, I'm totally kidding. I mean, I, I would. I wouldn't advocate anybody in the world taking somebody, you know, nine, ten months old to a protest, regardless of what it was. No, for. I know that. No, I just mean. I just mean. I didn't want things to get, you know, out of hand and get worse than they, than they were. You right. know, and right. you know, come to, you know have any violence make its way to you know closer to our home i guess okay. so that was my biggest thing is just the fear of protests getting out of control and instead of being peaceful becoming yeah. violent so yeah you know, the vast majority but, of them ended up staying peaceful yeah i mean here at least i mean there was some violence in other cities you know like louisville and stuff but uh, well i mean i i felt like i was left out so i went down to the corner and kicked a puppy <laughs> I'm, just, oh, I did snore. I was trying not to that snore. That was the fourth. <laughs> All that means is that you're happy to see me. Now, uh, well, yeah. well, let me let me ask you this, just because I'm kind of down this road anyway. Um, 
so I, part, part of what I went through over the last few weeks with not doing this show and feeling like I wasn't doing anything, but at the same time mm -hmm. feeling like I wanted to show support and stuff was trying mm -hmm. to figure out ways to do so without being like, you know, trite, average American going, here's my two cents, you know, <laughs> I don't know. Did you feel like you had, did you feel like you wanted to contribute in any way? Um, I mean, I didn't know really how to, I guess. That was, that, that was my problem too. You know, I, I did that thing like the, the, the anniversary, the Monday after George died, I did that thing where I blacked out all my social media accounts and I didn't post anything, just kind of a solidarity thing. Mm -hmm. But it was literally mm -hmm. like the very least I could have done, you know? Mm -hmm. And I just, yeah. you know, and, 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 there, and a lot of people put stuff up on social media about how it was. We're gonna get cut off. That was like the fastest show I've ever had. I've got a 40 minute time limit because I used the free account. Oh, really? Yeah, well, I don't, I don't feel like anybody wants to listen to anybody talk for more than 40 minutes. So I left it Agreed. there. Yeah, I don't even right? listen to you talk for 40 minutes and I love you. Oh. Oh, that was super nice of you. And it was also super honest for you to say that you didn't want to listen to me talk for 40 minutes. Well, thankfully, I let you guys talk more than I did. But I can't, it, will you guys both do this again? That See, was Chelsea, a joke. Though. It, it wasn't bad, was it? Yeah. No, it my daughter's bad. just it, it was screaming bad. her head off inside. But everything's fine. Everything's, yeah. every, everything's fine. Listen, give Goldie a kiss for me, and thank you both very no. much for being here. And Michael, no. let's do this again. Michael, when are you coming back up for a s'mores fire pit with your friends that are, that uh, are you know, you, not we, real uh, white? We're we're not we're not able to we're not able to go anywhere. Oh, you guys yeah, are still in. The, I thought you I thought you said that it yeah. that it had been lifted no, with can't. just restrictions. Yeah, we're not.